Hey, welcome to Vidsire Studios. Today's video, I'm going to be going over the general programs I use in Linux to make it a little easier for me for the projects I'm working on. So let's get this started. All right, before we get this going, I just wanna go over the previous video I did, which was covering the AMD graphics drivers used on Linux in order to get DaVinci Resolve running. You can find that video linked in the corner over here. And on to another note, there will be a little downer at the end of the video, unfortunately, that makes me just kind of sad, but it'll be something I'll have to deal with and figure out in the future. With that out of the way, let's go. All right, so for the first part of this video, I'm going to be going over image editing and such. What I am using to, uh, use with my raw images and so forth and what I am using to kind of optimize my kind of workflow with this. The second part will be going over audio and of course the transcode audio thing up here will be one of the highlights of that. <laughs> now with that I'm gonna get myself cornered down here and we will uh, get this uh, moving. Now currently Photography is not my major aspect of what I do for things, but I do have a Nikon D3300. It takes some pretty nice images overall. One of the biggest aspects and issues that we're to get around though is editing raw. Now I'm going to load up a dark table here where I have an image here I did from a photo shoot with just a friend of mine. And it doesn't look that bad that you can see here. It's not exact from what it would be as I will show you from the main program I would be using in Windows and what I primarily use still right now. So if I zoom on in you don't see any uh, issues you could say with the photo there's no pixelation but it's still not the default color input profile which I do have here so you can select it here and it's a uh, Nikon RGB Adobe RGB specific with this one. So I select it, you see it's gonna get really dark. And you're gonna have to modify it with the unbreak input profile. Now, this used to be a bit more advanced. And I've tried fiddling with it to find the more advanced version of this before. I'll pop on the screen a uh, little B roll to show you how it looks like on my Windows and how I would modify it from inside there. But uh, this is the top version they have on Linux right now, or maybe they changed it in uh, the newer version in general, but it doesn't have the same options under Unbreak like it used to. If I choose Nikon here, it's going to get a little too bright. I had that set up for a, uh, another one, so I'd have to bring the gamma down and modify a couple other things directly from here as well. This Nikon one preset was high as well. General brightness will have to be brought up, but it's still not just a direct easy solution. If you have like say a lower bright, an image that's not so bright, you would get quite a bit of a uh, color noise still in a uh, dark table. So if I want something that's just shot it looks good already and I just want to take it and just do a quick edit on it. Dark table is not the way to go even though I have the uh, proper color profile. So for that reason, that's why I have VirtualBox currently installed. I had Windows 10 working on boxes, but when I went over to uh, Ubuntu over here with the AMD graphics that presented a problem. But I have it working here on VirtualBox. Oh, wow, look at this. Big annoyance on Windows. <laughs> hey, there you go, it's, a, it's an update time. Fast forward through this part. Who knows how long exactly this is going to take. One thing I will have to say, at least 
VirtualBox on Linux is a lot faster. Okay, these are some test ones I did for a uh, test file. So what I'm gonna do is just get right into here. Simple walls of firewall, which I'll be covering actually in the next video with a bunch of just generic programs I use on Windows, but that's not this one. Raw images, this is the uh, Linux directory, of course. Of those, and just load it on up because I have Capture NXD on here. Now, I did try getting this working with uh, Wine, and uh, I did specifically put on Lutris because then you can just easily kill all the wine process and such, but oh it's been a nightmare I, I, don't, I don't know why I mean I have all the prerequisites and everything installed for it, but it just will not work properly and if I get it working in the future or if you know a way to do it, let me know in the comments below, but my current simple solution is to load up uh, VirtualBox get it uh, up on here. Like I said, this is already pretty much set to exactly as I want it. How to convert files, put into a source file as a high quality TIFF. And uh, that'll get it all uh, knocked on out of there. It doesn't look like it's there, but, it, but it's there. So that's done. Just quickly shut down on, uh... oh look. <laughs> it has updates upon updates. <laughs> So we can go ahead and, uh, oh, I didn't update. The update was a lie. And now I can just uh, open this up. And this takes it over for some reason to uh, the other screen. Because it just wants to be a pain in my butt today. And I'll load this back on up. You can see the NEF is still in there. Projects, not music, you're later. Raw images, Nikon D. 100 and you see the raw tiff there instead and you can see it looks uh, a bit different than here it'd be and Yeah, yeah, this is it's Taken you know from the uh, Raw itself there's no need to do too much than with it I mean, I guess this is pretty much as perfect of an image you're gonna get you see there's no real noise on here to begin with because it was a very bright day I mean maybe if I wanted to make it just a little bit smoother I use the non local means here I like the uh, smoothing process and such they have on uh, dark table a lot more than on GIMP which was where I go to next more all right add a little sharpen on here though there's no real reason to I could just do it with the gimp after and uh we'll just have this where are you exporting to go our cable town okay yeah that's right you will export as a tip as well because now it's at safe colors and things it's going to be accurate inside here done let's check did I put it says under projects you should be here our table temp yeah there it is temp raw right there and next we'd go into GIMP I mean there's not much to do here I'm gonna go more into GIMP in the future as well obviously I don't have script foo installed on here I actually imported one of the images I made from one of my thumbnails <laughs> that had script foo installed on uh, my Windows machine my well machine my Windows uh, boot section and then I tried importing it here and it said you don't have script foo go away <laughs> but then I could change it to Whatever I specifically want to do, like I, when I do these videos, I usually, for my thumbnail, modify out green and, and such, but no need to on here. Why doesn't it seem to be touching the green? Like I said, this thing's gonna be like, yeah, I'm touching it. <laughs> it looks 
looks at it more than the other options. Sure. Okay. Why not? Obviously, I'm not going to do anything massive here. Like I said, I'll go more into doing something like this in a future video instead. It's just going over the generic. So, for photo editing, to make it simple for myself, like I stated, I'm going to be using Virtual Box Manager, loading up uh, Capture NXD inside there, then going to Dark Table if I have to do some refinement and such or if I could just modify it straight up in there I'll just do it there then finalize certain things inside the game. and with that out of the way we'll move on to the audio instead this is gonna make it interesting the way to define interesting is uh, currently recording this video here so the previous couple things I did I should probably go into instead my OBS folder's back in here, so go in here. I'll make a uh, temp folder, you could say, so it doesn't bother my recording that's being done right here. That's this one currently. You see, as I hover over, 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 and the uh, file size keeps changing because it's actively recording. <laughs> okay. Audio editing, or audio changes that I need to do. DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve Studio still does not have codecs or licensing for AAC. So all of it has to be converted to WAV file. It's the same for MP3 as well, which I'll cover right after this here. I'll bring up the script here, as you can see. Let's kind of simple you can find it in the description below as well to do it if you don't need to transcode the video the first part of it is you need ffmpeg obviously so if you don't have that go ahead get ffmpeg if you have obs which i'm recording on obviously you need ffmpeg and it'll have you install it regardless i guess that's maybe something i should bring up to is very starter thing before going into this is uh, I use OBS for all my recordings and there's the infinite loop that you'll see here but afterwards I need to transcode the video because again well, I need to transcode the audio I may need to make that specific I do not touch the video the video is directly edited as H.265 on there because I have the studio version of this switch. Right, I use my dongle on my laptop for studio, which leads into the end of here, but I digress. I'm moving ahead of myself. So, as you see where my cursor is, you see it goes make dire for make directory transcoded. As you see back here, there's the transcode folder, so it puts the folder inside there. And it's for the whole command that goes follows here. This is the format that you are trying to transcode. These are .movs, so obviously it'll change the .movs. If you record in .mp4 or .mkv, obviously get that just changed on over. You say .mkv, which I could technically just record into regardless because I'm gonna have to transcode anyway. But as it states here, it says do FFmpeg. And then it moves on to mapping it directly. Now, this specifically states you want to map the video and you want to map the audio. I record uh, three different audio. Uh, sources. I've got one that combines both the desktop and my mic, and I have one that does just the desktop audio, and one that does just the mic audio. So if I need to change it in post, I can do that and have those options. Now, this command here straight out states I'm going to copy this video, and again, you need to put copy after that. 
and then specifically states, I want to convert the audio. It took me a while to find exactly how to do this. I found one that specifically showed how to convert the video and the audio originally for DaVinci Resolve if you're using the free edition and such, which, you know, it's definitely helpful, but here's a video showing you and giving you the command how to do just the audio. Because after I found that, I had to do a little more searching around to find how to set up the command line just to copy the video. And that tells you what you want to format you want to convert it to, which is, again, MOV. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to have this open up terminal from this location. Then I'm going to copy this on over. Control C. We're going to go over here. Control Shift V and hit enter. I'm going to move this on over because you're going to see that it'll make the uh, transcoded area folder itself and that encoded really, really fast because these were just really short <laughs> intros. This is basically the intro for this video and it's the, uh, you know, before we get started, my previous video, yada, yada, yada. But now you can see these files are on in here. And I'm going to just do a quick open on uh, VLC. And uh, you're not going to hear anything here because it's, again, the three different ones. And I think it'll just uh, record you just doing the, uh, where's the audio section. Audio. Oh, it doesn't actually state specifically what the format is, but it is wave as I'll. I'll do a quick import into DaVinci Resolve, I guess, and show you. I'll also bring this back to the beginning real quick. Go to Audio Track, change it to Track 2. Alright, before we get this going, I just want to go over the previous video I did. Oh, wow, that's I'm loud in my ears. Drivers ...used on Linux in order to get DaVinci Resolve running. So there you go. You see, I converted it and changed it on over. And I'll load it up into, like I said, DaVinci Resolve. After I go over the other audio program I used, this cartoon didn't really make changes, but whatever. The other audio program I used specifically for converting, like, say, the YouTube audio library from AAC. Is it AAC? No, I think it's MP3 to uh, Wave. I'll have this. You know, I had this in favorites. I could have just Go to projects. We're gonna have this open in a new window. Bring that up here out of the way. Go to music. You see, I've got Facebook and I got YouTube. Now, I specifically went through. Oh, I forgot this one apparently. You know what? I really should just tell it to not bother telling me. And you'll see every single one of these are just the MP3s from different songs that I use throughout the whole thing. And now we need these converted. And the program I use is Sound Converter. You can find this uh, right inside the software managers and such that you may use, or I'm sure you can find the command to, to use it in apt and terminal if you really need to. But what is really great about this is it'll detect not just uh, where the songs are from any subfolders, but as you see, it immediately grabbed every single one of them. I'll just tell it to select all. Now you will have to go into preferences the first time and tell it to change it to MS Wave. So once you get that done, you can have it just select all and click convert. <laughs> it does it real fast as you see right there. But it'll take every single one of those and it'll slap it right in the folder subfolders that they were in. Let's you specify. Let's, if, if you want to specify, we'll let you do that. Let's see. Let me drag this in here. And now it's got all of them. Preferences, same as folder output. So you can tell it to, yeah, right here, tell you to uh, change it to a different folder if you really, really want to. You can just close that on now because that makes it real simple. With that out of the way, we're going to load up DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you again in there that these files are working properly. And that'll lead to the unfortunate downer part of this video for something I'm going to have to figure out on how to fix. You 
see I still have my previous one up here. <laughs> so we'll uh, load this into a new one. Let dump one. We can drag these on over here. Get out the change because these are 60 FPS. I'm not going to play. It's the most annoying thing about DaVinci Resolve is if you have multi-channel audio, it'll play every single one of them. And it is annoying as hell. Drag that on down here. As you can see, there are two of them on there. And we'll take the uh, button. We still had them all selected regardless. Oh, because I told it to delete. We'll drag that on up here. And it all works. As I'll play it again for a few seconds. All right, before we get this going, I just want to go over the previous video. So there you go. It works. You can add uh, music to it if you want as well. Ah, it's fairly loud. Of course, we'll drag that down to like here and play it both, I guess. So I did covering the game. There you go. So this shows you just the generic photo editing I'd be doing for your sake of whatnot. And I'll cover that more in the future, showing how you could be definitely a bit more advanced with it. It'll probably just be a thumbnail of the video I'd be doing of like me with my green screen and whatnot. But that'll be in the future and the downer right the thing that makes me upset the thing i didn't check you know i went through fusion and i see that's working perfectly fine i went through the color grading this is uh all working fine <laughs> this isn't now the audio tracks are in here We'll uh, go back here and delete my babbling because that's annoying. Play this back just a tiny bit. You can see it's playing and all the things are here. But the track's not there. Oh! <sighs> this is the reason why I checked to see if uh, my dongle plugged into my computer. The reason for that is I installed Ubuntu Linux, the uh, new long-term service version, to be alongside Windows 10 on my laptop. The reason for this is that it's got an NVIDIA 1050 graphics card in it. I then went ahead, installed the NVIDIA graphics, installed CUDA, and booted up into DaVinci Resolve Studios. And the little B-roll showing you on here, Fairlight works without a problem. Irony is just like on Manjaro, the uh, tutorial still didn't work properly. But the important part is Fairlight worked properly. <laughs> uh, now, I don't know if it's because of the new long term service of DaVinci, uh, DaVinci Resolve, of uh, Ubuntu on there. I'm personally going to probably reinstall. It's not even going to be reinstalled because that's this is 18.04 on here. I'm going to install version 20 on here since this will be the next long-term service version, I guess, and see if I can get the AMD Pro Graphics working on it. If it'll straight up work on that and I can get DaVinci Resolve loaded up and Fairlight works, that's great. I, I kind of need to have this working. The whole reason for it is one of the things I've had been doing is working... Uh, Recording bands and things and if you want to say capture the ambiance the noise the audio also of the uh, Room to uh, be able to encapsulate it all together. I need to be able to match it all together without a problem That being said They do have the micro frames capabilities on the audio directly here in edit But obviously when you zoom in all the way it goes only by a frame by frame basis. There's a problem with that because I need to be able to zoom in much farther on those micro frames and that's where Fairlight kind of comes in. I, I need that working. 
So if I get that working, I'll do an update video on that, obviously. Uh, until then, I uh, guess that really just closes out this video here. It's kind of like I said, a down note over the whole thing. I can't do uh, much about that. And that makes me just kind of sad. <sighs> In the next video, I plan on going over some general programs I do use in Windows itself to uh, kind of help my flow, you could say, for what I'm still using over there instead of on Linux. Since right now, with that kind of an issue, I'm going to have to still mess around with it, see what I can get done, obviously, like this video here. I'll, all of those will still be generically edited directly on Linux itself. I also have these AirPlay videos I'm kind of starting to post onto here as well. They are going to be just let's play of some games that I enjoy playing through, some games I want to beat through that I haven't beaten through. And uh, if you are interested in it, you know, just check them on out in the channel. Other than that, I do stream on Twitch. Those are going to be Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. You could stop on by there. Those are just going to be games that I'm enjoying. I'm going to be starting Resident Evil 7 on uh, Monday uh, night. Uh, we'll progress from there and see uh, if that game can actually scare me or whatnot. <laughs> Other than that, that concludes this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed the content here, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. And if you're returning, thank you for supporting the channel. I hope you enjoyed the content, and I hope you all have a good day.